Hey guys and welcome to this quick little tutorial. So today I'm going to show you how you can make nice looking time lapses in Factorio. Alright, so this video will consist out of two parts. In part number one now I'm going to show you what you have to do in Factorio. We will download a mod and I will show you how to set that mod up. That mod will then take a bunch of screenshots basically. And in the second part I'm going to show you how you can make a time-lapse video out of these screenshots. Okay, so let's jump right in. We need a mod first. I have already installed the mod. It's called Credo Time-lapse mod for Series 17 in this case. Uh, if you don't have it installed already, you can just go into the install tab here, search after like uh, Credo and there, there she is. Two and four downloads only. I hope that will change soon because this mod is really great. Okay, so uh, we're just going to load some random game here now. Uh, let's just go with... Let's just go with this one. I don't think that I have anything set up here for the mod, so... Uh, yeah, okay, so now you will see a new button up there. So if we click that, we get already a couple settings here. Uh, so this is like the overall settings, basically. So, um, yeah, shared between all players. Um, Okay, so now down here we have two very important buttons. Uh, so essentially how this mod works is we're going to set up positions and then it will take screenshots at these positions at an interval here. Uh, so you can take players. Uh, in that case, uh, it's only like my name here that is there, but in a multiplayer game you would see more players. Uh, but that's not really recommended by me because that means that the, screen, the screenshot will always be centered on on you on the player and then when you're running around that all will move and that is mm, uh, yeah not so nice uh, I mean it's a similar effect as when you just like record your screen and then speed that footage up it also doesn't look that nice so what we're going to do instead is we're going to set a position here so we can see our positions we have none right now obviously but we can create a new one right here all right so uh, the first, uh, we will want to check that, so these creatures here are actually enabled, we can give give this like uh, some name. If you use like a mod that has like multiple game surfaces, then you can also define that one right here. Set time to noon for screenshots, so this will always, for the tick where the screenshot will be taken, set a time to noon. So at night this will basically give you, while playing, like a quick little flash. But I would recommend you to set this uh, anyways, I mean it will, yeah won't be the nicest experience when you play it but it's uh, yeah you get used to it and as a result of that all your screenshots will be nicely lit and bright and everything otherwise you would see like the day night cycle in your screenshots in the end then you get your image uh, width and height in pixels so uh, yeah these are set here per default to 1080p basically 1080p resolution I would recommend you to set these as high as you can because then you can just zoom in after the fact and get like a bit of zooming effects in it and stuff like that. Um, so the zoom level is then the level of the zoom in game. So what you can also do is you can use like the screenshot command. We will go over that maybe in a second uh, to just figure out like how your screenshot should look like, what should be included in a screenshot. So the zoom level basically, like if you're like zooming it out basically, so that's how much you can see and the resolution is just like how high definition those screenshots it will be and how much detail they basically still then have. Um, yeah, so these are the coordinates of the center of the screenshot. What you can do down here is just get player x, x and y. I'm just going to uh, go somewhere where we can have that all a little bit more centered maybe. Uh, around here maybe. Okay, so that will just then take uh, the player coordinates that makes everything just a little bit easier. Okay, show entity alt info and screenshot. So this is basically just like if you're going to press, uh, yeah, no, okay. Basically all that information, should that be in the screenshot as well? I always enable that because then you can uh, see everything a little better because now like that, yeah, sure, this like lots of assembly machine stuff like that, but you cannot see what they're actually doing, so <clears throat> uh, yeah, this way it just looks a little bit nicer, I think. Oh, 
Okay, so then once you set everything up in here, you can hit just save and then you have your new position one here or whatever you named that. We can close out of here. So now to start making screenshots, basically we just have to tick that box and then the mod will basically be enabled. So down here we can also set the interval. So per default, this is 18,000 ticks. Uh, so that should be, I think, around five minutes. Um, you can get as low as 600 ticks, which is one script every 10 seconds. I always uh, would use that because then you have just a, a lot more freedom in post-processing and like editing the video uh, in terms of like speeding it more up or down. That just gives you like the biggest flexibility, but you will have obviously tons of screenshots with that. Uh, obviously also it kind of depends on like how long the period should be in which you take all the screenshots. Yeah, you have to kind of plan a bit, a bit ahead with that maybe. Um, all right, and then you can just hit save and then the mod should start doing its thing. Um, you can also play a little bit around. Let's actually just disable that again. Um, when you go into your console here and then you can say slash screenshot, I think you can just go in like, uh, let's say maybe like one. So basically with that command, you can uh, play a little bit around. So this is like, again, your screenshot with your height and the zoom level. And with that, you can play a little bit around how you want everything to have, how everything like should look like in terms of what, what is included within the screenshot, basically. Or within all of the screenshots. So let's just enable that here again. Yeah, now it's actually getting night, so we should now be able to see if we wait for a short moment. Yeah, I don't know if this is like uh, as nice to see on video, but there was just like a quick flash. There should be another one here. Yeah, there they are. Okay, great. So now let's just take a look at these creatures that we just took. And I'm also going to show you obviously where you can find all of these. All right, now let's take a look at the actual screenshot. So for that, you're just going to go to uh, percent app data percent. Now you'll locate the effectorio folders. If you have uh, the game manually downloaded from the website, then this will just be your inside your normal game folder. That right here is now for the Steam version, basically. Um, that in here, yeah, there should be a folder called script-output. In here are now all the screenshots. So these are all the screenshots that I've taken already with the slash screenshot command. That right here was the one that I uh, took as the test one. So that's 1920 by 1080. Uh, 1920 by 1080 at a zoom level of one, for example, which is uh, not very great, obviously, now for uh, time lapse because you cannot really see a whole lot in here. So you would usually zoom a lot further out. Um, and then here's also the folder CTLM, which stands for Credo Time Lapse Mod. Uh, in here is now the folder called temp. So if you actually go look inside of Factorio here, that's like just a save screenshots too. So you can add another name in there, but that is not really necessary. All right. Um, now inside of here, you see a uh, folder for positions. So in here will now be all the different positions. We only have one called the position one. So that's just the one that's here. And this is now all the screenshots that the mod has taken. So as you can see, I'm not centered here, so there's my player, and I'm now over there, now I'm down here, and now over here, so it's uh, always fixed on that position, which makes everything a lot nicer to look at. Uh, you can also see we turned on the alt info, so you can see that also up here everywhere, basically. Um, yeah, exactly. So then you just have to play a little bit around with the settings, as I said, that like everything is inside. Yeah, you have to plan a little bit ahead, obviously, because if you want to take screenshots or make a time lapse of how you build a base, then yeah, you can maybe run into the issue that you actually come out outside of the uh, screenshot radius or the screenshot uh, frame, but then you will be able to still uh, create a second position, for example. So if you set up like a mining outpost, you can uh, set up a second position there. Mm, I would just generally advise you to try and uh, take a resolution that's as high as possible without being bad for your playing experience as well. Um, 
because the larger the screenshots are, the longer they will take to save, and that is uh, going to give you a little hiccup in the game. Um, yeah, okay, I think that should be actually enough info about all of that, so now let's turn into editing this together. So, alright, so these are all the screenshots here that I've taken uh, in my Let's Play Season 5 of Victorio, um, and I already made some time out of that, you can find them on my channel or also probably in the video description if I didn't for forget. So as you can see right here, let's just open up one. Uh, yeah, these are also like uh, of a very high resolution. Let's take one that's uh, maybe like more towards the end here. As you can see, they are like uh, around like 80 uh, megabytes in size, so, which is definitely a lot. So that's something that you have to look out for. Um, yeah, there they are. Okay. The Windows uh, photo viewer doesn't like screenshots of that size, that's for sure. Uh, as you can see here, the resolution is fairly high, which you cannot see really in uh, the photo view of Windows 10, because it's just trying to like blend everything together, as you zoom in, it's just a little weird. I also can move this around for, for some reason, but as you can see, we have a pretty big radius, and this is a screenshot at 8K resolution, so you can see a lot in there and get a lot of these fine details when you want to zoom in and out. Um, yeah, exactly. So here you can see uh, this is actually like almost a little bit too big, but yeah, it doesn't matter because we have a high resolution. So I edited it with uh, Premiere Pro because this is like my editing program of choice, but I'm also going to give you some tips that are applicable to other editing programs as well. Uh, so let's just load up my project file here real quick. All right, let's wait a second until it maybe loaded some things in here. Uh, let's switch over to here maybe first. Okay, so first up you have to obviously import all your screenshots. So inside of Premiere Pro, this is actually relatively easy. You just have to go into the folder that contains all your screenshots and then you go... Um, I would uh, also advise you to just copy them out of like the folder I showed in the beginning into somewhere else basically and you just click the first one and highlight that and then you can click this button image sequence down here so this then will import all of them essentially as a video already and then you can just click like open or whatever that is in english or in your language of windows and then you will have uh, this right here as a video sequence so you can already see this is like at 60 frames per second and everything it's called blah 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 dot png but that doesn't really matter um yes yeah, so that's already a video sequence and then i basically just for the uncut time lapse i just put that on my timeline down here and that's essentially already the entire video this is like a super laggy in playback because we're dealing like with huge amounts of data basically because this is like about 80 megabytes time 60 per second so this is a uh, quite a lot of data obviously i think like all the screenshots together and th these short uh, 45 seconds here are around uh, 200 or so gigabytes so that's quite a lot that you definitely have to think about before you start a time lapse project but yeah so maybe here video editing program doesn't feature such an import feature um in that case what you can always do is you can just import all the screenshots uh, yeah, for that you would usually create like a, a folder inside your project for all the screenshots basically, then you can move them all into there um, and then put them onto the timeline. The problem with that would then be that they are a little bit too long. So what you can often do is, I think uh, there are some import options here somewhere. I mean, it will obviously depend on your video editing program, uh, I think in the timeline. We have still image default duration here for uh, Premiere Pro, for example. So I could actually set that to be like one frame. And then when I put an image onto the timeline, it's just like one frame long. And then when I just put all of them on a timeline at once, then this would essentially have a similar effect to this down here. Um, if your editing program also doesn't support that, there's always the option of just using FFmpeg. So this is like a command line based tool for like video transcoding uh, which is also able to do that 
Um, just Google a little bit around for that. Just search for like FFMPEG uh, time lapse or something like that. And then you should be actually able to uh, also find a little bit about that topic. Um, yeah, and once you have your video in here, you can really just edit that. You can put some audio underneath that. You can also just uh, make it go slower. In Premiere Pro, you can like right click onto it and then you can say uh, speed duration and then you can make it a little bit slower because it was a little bit too fast for my taste, honestly. So I just slowed that down a little bit. Uh, we are not going to scrub through here because that is loud. Um, yeah, I even uh, got like some essential graphic thing here. Uh, no idea what it is in here. This is like a big mess, but hey, uh, for like this uh, custom timer there, let's actually just mute this right here so we can go safely through here. So I made like a timer that goes uh, and starts at like zero and then like progresses through the entire video and then goes all the way to like seven hours and 28 minutes. And then here in the end, I just took like the last screenshot extended that. So it's like uh, shows the last frame and I took also screenshot of like the victory screen, for example. So yeah, you can play a little bit around with all of that. Those should just be like some uh, quick little tips here. Actually now for zooming in, you can go into effect controls up here and we are keyframe animation. I just like did like scale and position and then you can see all the individual keyframes right here and how that moves everything around. Yeah, it's super terrible in the playback. But yeah, you can play a little bit around with that. You can do some effects with that now, obviously, because we are at a higher resolution. So one thing still to look out for um, when you are editing the, the entire thing, you don't want the timeline here to be at the same resolution as your uh, footage. So if you go into here, you should be able to see yeah, video info. This is just uh, 4K resolution, while the screenshots are actually of 8K resolution. And the uncut timeline in this case is also 8K. Um, because you're probably going to zoom in, then you can just go for low resolution, basically, because you're zooming in anyway, so you're going to lose info uh, and resolution. So, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, this is 8K. This is like something that isn't really something that you would upload to YouTube normally, so it doesn't even really make sense to, to upload in that kind of resolution. You can obviously always do that, but yeah. Um, other than that, this should be pretty much it about everything here. If you still have questions, then you can still uh, obviously ask uh, in the comments down below. I'm always happy to help. You can also write me an email if you don't want to post publicly uh, at community at the txt.club. And yeah, I'm not so fast on answering emails, but I'm usually fast with answering comments. So. Yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you could learn something new here. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. See you in the next videos. Until then, have a great time. Bye-bye.